So I'm up here to talk to you today about failure. Failure, yes, I said it. The F word in development. We never talk about failure. We never speak about failure. I know you're giggling because like, oh, he's even saying it on stage. Because for us, we don't like to talk about failure. What we're doing, we're doing innovation. We talk about being innovative innovators, innovating innovation. But we never say our innovation failed. I've read many project reports, and I know you've made many proposals and project reports, and never do they write in there, yeah, we tried that and we failed. Everybody writes, oh, we're innovative, and we did some innovation, or we learned lessons, or I like this new one, we had unsuccesses. Um, and so I believe that failure is tied to innovation, and I think we should accept it. In fact, and I'm really disappointed we don't talk about it, in fact, uh, raise your hands if you feel that you've ever failed in a development project. Raise your hand high, raise your hand high. So a good majority of the room, but still some people had their hands down. Liars. <laughs> and why is that? Well, first, are we working on easy problems? No, we're working on some of the most intractable problems known to man that no one has solved in thousands of years, right? We're also working in places that we call them failed states, right? And at the same time, we're introducing change. Change by definition is really risky. And yet here we are, we had people today who kept their hands down and said, no, 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 I, I, I've never failed. I don't fail, right? We have this inherent fear. But if we go look at Silicon Valley and we talk to them, and that's arguably one of the best places to make money in America, um, people in Silicon Valley, every single VC will say, yes, I've failed. Every single startup person will say, yes, I've failed many times, right? It's a mark of badge, uh, it's a badge of honor. The VCs are interesting, venture capitalists. They expect nine of their 10 investments to fail they expect a 90% failure rate. And they are working in an easy business environment. Here we are working in failed states and we get shivers and having to actually say the word failure even once, right? Which is insane. And at the same token, I think part of it is because when we hear the word failure, we think massive, massive failure. We think Fukushima, we think um, uh, the Hindenburg. We think of just where people die and it's horrible. But failure has different spectrums. There's the simple failure of, honey, I'm sorry, I forgot the milk. Yeah, I'll go get some. There is failure where we say we're going to reach 1,000 people, but we only reach 500. And yes, in the absolute, that is a failure. In the relative, there is success. And also, there is planned failure. When we do something for the first time, we call it a test. We call it an alpha, right, a pilot, and we see if it works. And if it doesn't, we change it a little bit and we do it again, we call it a beta. We've all dealt with beta software. Every product that we have that's a consumer or business product, we expect it to go through iterations and improve over time, right? And then it's never truly perfect that there's this concept of Kaizen, we always have to improve. And yet in our development projects, we've never failed, right? Which to me is just really strange. If you look in the business world, YouTube, that was supposed to be a dating site. Arguably now one of the best places on video and I did not find my wife on YouTube, I found her on Match. <laughs> True story. Um, and in the same concept, SMS, text messages, SMS was supposed to be machine-to-machine -machine communication. It was never meant for a human to read a text message. Operators make millions on SMSs. Viagra. Viagra was originally designed to try to reduce heart attacks. It didn't do that so well, but wow, that side effect. <laughs> So in that sense, there is success that comes from failure and there's innovation. We celebrate this innovation that is and requires failure along with it. But then we come to our own industry and I think we have to change it because I think what we do is insane. I think a oh, simple change is to have a before action report, not just an after action report. And to understand that we're going to have multiple successes or influences and there'll be a range of success and influence, right? That you hit 500, that could be a success versus always thinking you have to hit 1,000. But I think our ultimate insanity that we have to change is this concept that when we write a proposal, 30 to 60 days, almost always over a holiday, that somehow that this is going to be something that we should be legally bound to for the next three to five years. And that any change in that prescripted to the dollar, activity described to the nth degree, any change in that is a failure, right? That's insane. Imagine going home and telling your spouse and your children, we're going to set up a project plan for our household uh, over the next five years. Uh, we're going to do it over the weekend. Monday morning, we're going to sign it. Any deviation from this will be a failure. Any deviation from these expected outcomes, failure, right? Your, your family would look at you as if you're insane. And yet we come to work every day and we practice that insanity. So I think we really have to change. We have to make a space for innovation which requires a space for failure, 
right? And we have to plan for it. We have to expect it. To an extent, we have to celebrate failure because I believe that is a true mark of innovation. It's a mark of success. It's a mark of how we're actually going to have programs scale from pilots to global changing programs. And in that, my challenge to you today is actually use the word failure to say it out loud. Failure. You can do it. Come on with me. Say it out loud. Yes, you just admitted the F word in development. Thank you. <laughs>